mommy. I know, baby. Go play. Hi, my name is Deanne Bloomfield. My name is Lisa Barrett. My name is Lorraine Kelly. My name is Tamir Smith. My name is Ashley Olmstead. So my name is Jennifer Longo. Born at St. Mike's Hospital in Toronto. I migrated to Canada when I was 10 years old. I'm a resident of Whippy. And I grew up in Scarborough. Um, all over the place, actually. My public school was Langton Public School. Midland Collegiate. Sir John A. McDonald. We to be Pearson. And then went to R.H. King. Feminine Falls Secondary School. And then I went to West Hill Collegiate. And married. I was actually engaged at age 18. Married when I was 20. I had some abusive relationships. <sighs> Sorry. I had my son when I was 21 and my daughter when I was 23. I had a son. We have two children. A mother of five. No kids. Two grandchildren. Single mom of two. I have a lovely dog. Tell me your most fondest memory. We were uh, top schools. I played all sports, so that was always fun. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> I was a shy, happy little girl. I was the fastest runner in the school. I did really well. I ended up graduating high school and, and I got, went on to college, and I was very proud of myself for that. My parents were too. Uh, when I was growing up, my parents were uh, the products of the Depression, so we didn't uh, spend a lot of money. Growing up with my mom being in poverty, she was a single mom of five kids, so it was hard. The relationship I had with my parents was, it was very separate. I didn't have a lot of memories of them even being in the house together. I migrated to Canada when I was 10 years old. I moved around. I was actually a Crown Water CIS, and um, basically, group homes, foster homes. I often felt like the pity of the town. Often people would like give us their hand-me-down clothes or whatever and then I would show up to school like in the popular girls old clothes and I wore always wore hand-me-downs, always. I felt like a joke a lot of the time. My mom I think took my brother and I from the house, went to my grandmother's in Toronto and my dad showed up drunk at my grandma's and so they called the police my dad broke the door down um, so he was arrested uh, in front of my brother and I um, and my mom and my grandma crying and all that um, well my mother she worked a full-time job and she also went to school at night trying to get us out of housing and trying to get us ahead and um, but while she was doing that she was very busy and I met a fellow who's an older fellow that was in his late 40s and um, started um, started molesting me couldn't sleep anymore couldn't be open shut down no. was failing classes um, and not going to class started smoking drugs, I was skipping class, I wasn't going to school, I went to 10 different high schools. Just not in with a good crowd, I think. Just hanging out with the wrong people and doing the wrong things and making bad choices. I got moved from uh, French immersion into English um, because I had a learning disability that they discovered. When I migrated to Canada from Jamaica where we spoke English, they put me into an ESL class, which was kind of interesting because English was my first language. You've gone through a lot of death in your life. Yeah, my mother was killed by a drunk driver. I had an aunt that was murdered. So my son was killed in a job-related incident. He was killed on the job, so I took a week off work. I was told by customers that I was swearing at them at the cash registers. So I ended up going to a neurologist, very nice woman, and she says, well, you've got a malformed Tourette's, dear. And I thought, oh, geez, now Tourette's is something else, you know? And I don't know if I can handle any more bad news, you know. They fired me after 15 years because I really didn't take a proper time to grieve. 
you know. I mean, growing up with my mom, I knew what assistance was about. I mean, there was many times I had to have a conversation with her so she could explain to me what's going on and why we don't have water or why this or why I can't go on a trip. It was hard bringing home permission slips because I knew <laughs> that I probably wouldn't get to go. And, or if I did ask, I would feel guilty because I knew I would be taking from my brothers and my sisters. This is Thursday, September 14th, 2000, so I would be 11 or 12 at this point. It says, Dear Journal, I think that the money for pizza and hot dogs is crazy. I can't believe that hot dogs are $2. That is ridiculous. I won't be getting any pizza or hot dogs all this year unless I get lucky and get an allowance. And what were you feeling when you wrote that? <sighs> Poor. <laughs> Sad. Eleven. <laughs> that two dollars was, I knew two dollars was too much for my mom. Can, can I ask you, do you, find, do you find that you're always just like putting out fires? Because it's almost like it's hard to see anything past today. Like, do you think about the future at all? Like, what, what do, you, do you think about five years from now, ten years from now, or is it just like, I'm just trying to survive today? Most of the time, um, I've trained myself to kind of learn how to go only a couple days at a time. Because if I start worrying about a couple months ahead, I, that's when my anxiety and depression decide to take over. And I won't want to do anything. I was just trying to get by every day and never felt like I was going to accomplish anything. I never thought about Tomorrow, I just thought about that day and how I could survive. Being so overwhelmed in a moment with the thousands of things that are crashing down on you, that you can't see past even just one of those things in order to take your first step and move towards the light. I've been trying to get my daughter's teeth done for two years. I noticed two years ago she was having cavities in the back. And I took her to a dentist that I was referred to out in Clarington. And I gave them my OW slip, which also sucks <laughs> knowing that you can't pay for your kids care yourself. And they handed me a bill of almost $700 and said, this is the rest after your OW coverage. And I said, are you kidding me? I just handed you an assistance slip. Where am I gonna get $700? I'm living in a women's shelter. And they said, I don't know. And I said, what am I supposed to do? I have no way to get her teeth done. And nobody had a resource for me. Nobody had any idea what to do. And I'm sitting here feeling like more and more of a piece of shit. Sorry. I'm Kathleen Conway, and I'm a supervisor with the Employment Supports Program at 200 John Street. Um, in Oshawa. Getting Ahead is it's a program that we purchased under the umbrella of another program called Bridges Out of Poverty. And Bridges Out of Poverty was training that we bought out for our staff a number of years ago to help them start to understand the complexity of poverty and help them understand how to probably better deal with people that are living in situations of poverty. 
And really it tackles the, the issue of looking through different lenses of how you view poverty. And being able to consciously recognize that when you come from middle class, you're gonna have a different point of view than if you come from poverty class. Then the next step we knew was that we needed to connect clients. And getting ahead is that part of the program. It um, allows our clients to come in and start looking at uh, their situation of poverty uh, through very much the same education that we gave our staff, uh, but really dedicated time to really start looking at what's involved in their poverty more than just the financial stuff. It lasts 16 weeks and every week they come to class for just once a week and then they go home and then they do their investigation uh, uh, into their own situation and elements around what they're learning. There's no simple solution to uh, poverty and uh, the complexity of, of what poverty brings. And I think what we're really excited about with this program is that by having our clients uh, come through similar programming, we're now equipped to go at the table as equals to start having a conversation. You know, I think in its truest form when you look at co-production is having a client by your side, in this case it would be a client and a staff person, as equals. But beyond that I think the co-production piece comes into organizationally, culturally, how we look at when we have meetings, when we're making decisions, when we're thinking about possibilities to improve a client's life is inviting clients to the table as our equals and actually as the experts. There's going to be a day when we look at our culture and if a client isn't at the table in these discussions, we're going to think it's kind of weird. Um, and then we know we've arrived when that happens. We make the class. And we did it together. We all did it together. We are all different and we all have a place in the class where we feel safe. We're all in this together. We all have a place at the table. We really matter. We all really matter. And it's great. Go in with an open mind and you'll be amazed at what you feel, what comes out of you, what you can express. Every voice matters. Every voice. I mean, I, I can't say this enough about this course. Everybody's welcome. We're all equal. It's a great program. One of the quotes I always used in the program um, was who we are today is determined by what we do yesterday. Who we are tomorrow is determined by what we do today. You believe that? A hundred percent. That's why I'm in the position I am now. I'm being accountable for what I do every single day. So after this program, after I put my plan together, within a week and a half, I got a job placement. So I'm working. <laughs> so I'm very happy about that. Um, dear Ashley Olmsted, I am delighted to share the news that you've been accepted to Trent University. Let me be the first to congratulate you on your admission to the Honors Arts Program of Psychology starting September 2017 for full-time studies at Durham GTA campus. How does that make you feel? Amazing. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years from now? graduated <laughs> from my honors program. I see a future now. That's the best part. 